After the destruction of the Khwarazmian Empire, Genghis sent his army in two directions. One through Russia into Azerbaijan and Armenia, led by Subutai and Jeb. Genghis led the main force himself into Afghanistan. Jeb and Subutai managed to destroy the Kingdom of Persia and led violent incursions into Crimea, even capturing the trade fortress of Kaffa. While returning from the successful invasion, Subutai and Jeb were attacked by Mstislav the Bold at the Battle of Kalka River. Mstislav had been sent in order to stop the Mongols. Subutai led an army of 20,000 Mongols against a Russian army four times its size. The Mongol rearguard was defeated early in the battle, and so the rest of the horde was forced to retreat. Mstislav the Bold chased down the retreating Mongols with victory in his eyes. His army spread out as they attempted to catch them, a chase which lasted many days. Mstislav spotted Mongols in formation along the Kalka River, and attacked without waiting for reinforcements. With his army in disarray, and the Mongols ready and waiting, Mr. Slav quickly lost the battle and was forced to retreat back to a fortified camp. He had fallen for a feigned retreat. Mr. Slav surrendered to Subutai with the agreement that neither he nor any of his men would be harmed. But to Mr. Slav's dismay, they were all slaughtered upon leaving the camp, except Mr. Slav, who managed to escape. Mr. Slav the Bold boldly ran away. Genghis called them back to Mongolia, but Jeb died while travelling back to Samarkand. They had achieved their goal, which was more than just a conquer. It was a reconnaissance mission, and on it, they gained information about the spoils beyond the Bulgar territory, which whet the Mongols' appetites for future invasions of Europe. Genghis still had unfinished business in China, fighting against the Western Jiar and the Jin, former vassal states who had turned their back on him and formed a coalition. Mongol hordes tore through China, destroying cities, massacring armies, and when they finally surrendered to him, executing the entire imperial family. Genghis was a man who would happily forgive and reward his enemies, but he had no tolerance for betrayal. After Genghis Khan died in 1227, his children fought over the right to succeed him. The legitimacy of his eldest son Jochi came into question. When Genghis rescued Borte from the Tartar, she was already pregnant with one of her captor's sons. Genghis decided to ignore this and raised the son as his own, naming him Jochi. Out of Genghis's four sons, Chagatai was the most outraged by Jochi's illegitimacy. He made it clear that he would never accept Jochi as Khan, and Genghis feared that he would even start a civil war if Jochi were to take charge. So, does he decide to put Chagatai in charge instead? No. Chagatai had a temper and acted too irrationally. He couldn't put his youngest in charge either, as appointing the youngest would have gone against Mongol culture. Instead, he put Ogadai in charge, as he was a neutral party and might be able to create order. The empire grew further out in all directions under Ogadai's rule. It then continued to grow under the next three Khans, Gayak, Monke, and Kublai, until 1294, when the empire was at its greatest extent. The disunity finally reached breaking point. The empire was divided into four Khanates, ruled by different Khans. This was the Il Khanate, the Yuan Dynasty, the Golden Horde, and the Chagatai Khanate. This was the end of the Mongol Empire's rise and the beginning of its downfall. <laughs>